The water sensor alarm is a project that you can build and all you need to do is to go to my website at www.rv-project.com and you'll see all the details required so that you can build one yourself. In this video I'm going to be installing my water alarm system which consists of this water alarm monitor and I'm using three sensors. This project uses two different types of microcontrollers. First of all, the AT Tiny 85, which is here, and you probably are familiar with that if you've done any of my other projects, because all of my microcontroller projects up until this one has used this little microcontroller. And I'm using this for the sensors. However, there's not enough input-output pins on this little guy to handle all of the tasks that need to be handled. So now, in this project, I'm also introducing this one, well, this is called a Arduino Nano, and it comes already built like this. Now, surprisingly, this is around a dollar fifty to two dollars, depending on the quantity and where you get it. This is between about two and three dollars, so you know there really is not a big difference in price. And also, you'll notice that this has a USB port on it, so you can connect this directly to your PC or Mac or whatever you're using and use the Arduino IDE, the software programming interface, without having to plug it into any other device like you do with this one. Now, of course, the difference and the reason I've been using this one up until now is because it's much smaller and it can fit into smaller projects. And so these are the three sensors that I'm using. They're identical, except for this one I've not encapsulated yet in epoxy like I have with these two, because I wanted to kind of give you a better idea of what's here. And here's our AT Tiny 85. And by the way, this actually comes from a design that's been on the internet for a while, and it's a public domain called H2O No, and it's a water alarm detector. And it was available commercially from a company called Spark Fun for a while, but they don't sell it anymore. And it's known as beerware. And what that means is if you ever run across the author that designed this. If you offer him a bottle of beer, then he'll call it good. And since this design is already available, rather than starting over from scratch, I just did modify this for my use. And the H2 Ono originally came with a buzzer, and I replaced the buzzer with a relay, and also I put some supervisory circuitry on here, so you can tell if this is connected or disconnected. But anyway, this is basically an H2 Ono design that has been modified and adapted to work with this system. And these modules, they all have their little sensor paddles, which again, this is my design. Uh, this is not part of the H2 Ono. This is what I came up with. And you can mount this anywhere you want to mount it in your RV. You can mount it either here or you can turn it over and mount it here. And the difference is this has to be in contact with water for the sensor to work. So it's about an eighth inch of difference. And one of the other reasons why I went with the H2O design, the author did a lot of work on getting this thing down to only one milliampere in operation. I went a little step further and I increased the time that this sleeps to about nine seconds. So once every nine seconds this will awake and check the probe to see if it detects water then it'll go back to sleep. And that's sufficient for this application. Also, I put a fuse in this uh, circuit board and a TVS diode, which I do with almost all of my projects now. So this is surge suppressed. And then we have the monitor board. And I just have these wires here for testing, and we'll take them off when we install it. And the monitor board has three channels, and each one of the h 20 modules go on a channel. In fact, we can parallel the H2O no modules. We can have two, three, or four on each channel. So you can have totally, probably 12, maybe at the maximum, of the H2O modules. And I wouldn't go any farther than that because this is limited to one amp. And the power for these is derived from here. In fact, you can have as little as one. So you can have one or 12. So this is designed to go in the panel in your main control console. And from these three channels, it goes through this IC, which is a voltage follower. It's basically what we would call a buffer, which just isolates the input from the microcontroller. 
and there is a switch here which is a three position switch and it's labeled one two and three and that corresponds to the three channels so let's say if he's only using one H2O module channel one is here you would turn channel two and three off and just leave channel one enabled so this switch actually enables the combination of these three channels there's also a relay on board here with another set of contacts and this is a remote so if you receive an alarm the relay will close and these are the relay contacts so this actually is like closing a switch so you could connect it to a Bluetooth module or whatever that you could use to you know notify your smartphone so now I've got all three channels plugged in and power is applied and I'm going to turn the switch on As you can see, the green light is monitoring each channel. This is labeled channel 3, channel 2, and channel 1. So this is checking channel 3, checking channel 2, checking channel 1. And if you look at the sensor modules, you can see every 9 seconds a little blink. And that blink means that that is when it is actively checking to see if there are any water leaks. And I just have a little sponge here with some water on it. And I'm just going to take my thumb and wet one of these and it'll take up to nine seconds so you see this light is now turned flashing red that means that's the channel that detected the water and you'll see on the display it still scans the other channels but then it stops at the channel having the fault and if you depress the reset button, it turns the alarm off, but it still notifies you of the channel. Now it evaporated, turned green again, so let's try this again. Let's just leave this here for a minute. Although I use sensor one this time. And I hold the button and I have turned the alarm off. And even though the alarm audio is off, the audio will come on once every 10 seconds or so. You can hear a little blip. So it'll do a blip every once in a while. And if you don't want that blip, then you're going to just have to shut this panel off. There is no way to go any further. Okay, so we'll kind of dry this off a little bit as much as possible. And now we see that it's back to normal. And the next alarm is we can introduce a fault. And so let's say we lost a connection here. And you can see when we have a loss of connection, we get a red light. This will let us know if we have a wiring issue with one of the channels. And then when we reconnect the channel, we typically have to hit the reset button for us to get the channel back. And a third thing that this does is self-calibrates every time you turn it on. And also, if you just press the reset button, it will also self-calibrate. And perhaps the most difficult part of installing these sensors is to actually crawl under everything and run the wiring. Here I've run some wire for the sensor under the sink. And we're going to find a suitable location down here to mount it. And this is the sensor paddle. And I don't think I really want to mount it right on the water pipes because they could sweat in the summer and it'll give you a false reading. So this is the top of the holding tank. So if we get water dripping down here, we're going to have water accumulating in here. So I think I'm just simply going to lay this in there. I don't know if I even need to attach it to anything. And there we go. You can see where the sensor is. And you'll be able to see it from the outside. If you actually bent down and looked on the floor, but you can't see it just by walking by. And these connectors that I'm using are actually crimpon waterproof. They have a little silicone sealing in it. And with the potting compound in these modules, they're pretty much waterproof. And I'm just sticking them on with some VHB tape. And so now we have all the three sensor wires ran through our console here with the connectors on the end. And then we've got power connectors as well. So next step is actually to plug the uh, monitor panel in. I uh, marked each one of these sensors and the way I figured them out is I just installed one at a time and just saw which one aired because remember these things can detect a bad channel 
So that was the easy way to do it. So I got kitchen, uh, bathroom, and wet area. I did have a bit of trouble getting this panel in here, and I actually had to enlarge the hole behind here just slightly. So let's see what happens. There we go. It's monitoring. 